Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, we're going to take a look at Alma Linux OS. It's a fantastic server distribution. It's also pretty cool on workstations as well. And in this video, you're going to see the entire installation process every step of the way. Now be sure you back up any files that you might want to keep before you get started if you're following along with me, because during this tutorial, we'll be making Alma Linux OS the only OS on the computer. As far as what you'll need in order to get started, you might need a flash drive. Now, if you plan on installing Alma Linux OS inside of a virtual machine, then you'll only need the ISO image that we'll be downloading as part of this tutorial. However, if you plan on setting up a physical installation, you're going to need a flash drive. So if that's you, then I have a video that covers using USB Imager to create bootable media, and I'll leave a card for that video right about here. Anyway, like I said, by the end of the video, we'll have Alma Linux OS set up and ready to go. It's highly recommended. It's a very capable and solid distribution of Linux backed by a very awesome community. But before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have two brand new courses available over on Udemy. First, if you're in the process of learning Linux for the very first time, you should definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. Not only will this course teach you everything you need to know to get started and learn the basics of Linux, it's also going to help you get certified and earn your Linux Essentials credential through LPI. And the Linux Professional Institute is the world's largest Linux and open source focused vendor neutral certification body. So by earning certifications through LPI, your credentials will be recognized around the world. But even if you don't have any interest in getting certified, this course is still a great fit for those of you that are getting started with Linux because it'll teach you all the basics. Also, I recently released an Ansible course as well, which will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Ansible. Ansible is one of, if not the most popular configuration and automation platforms in the Linux ecosystem, so it's definitely something that you need to learn. Ansible is a powerful and easy to learn platform that'll enable you to automate even the most complicated Linux administration tasks. And just like with my Linux course, each lesson will break down even the most complicated components and concepts into easy to understand lessons, and by the end of the course, you'll learn everything that you need to know to use Ansible as part of your daily tool set. Thank you guys so much for checking out my courses. I really appreciate it. Now with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive in and install Alma Linux. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to almalinux.org. Once there, we'll click on download. Then we'll scroll down. And we see several options here. So what I'm going to do is download the minimal ISO. Now, if you want a desktop environment or something like that, you could download a larger one. For example, the DVD is a larger file that has more software on it. But to keep it simple for this tutorial, I'm going to download the minimal ISO. Now, when it comes to turning that ISO image into bootable media, again, you'll need a flash drive. You can check out my USB imager video if you want a tutorial on how to do that. Once you have your bootable media created from the ISO image, you'll boot your computer from the ISO image. Just look for a boot menu selection when you boot your computer. Make sure that the USB flash drive that you use with USB imager is inserted, and you should be good to go. When you start your computer from the installation media, the first screen that you'll come across is this one. I do recommend that you choose the default option here to test the media just to make sure that everything went according to plan when we created the media earlier. Now, I've already done that off camera, so what I'll do is just choose the option up here to speed the process along a bit. I'll choose Start Alma Linux, which is exactly where you'll end up after the testing is complete on your end. Now, on my end, the installation media has started. My screen might look different from yours depending on which media you're using. The DVD and the minimal ISO images, for example, will start the installer immediately. Now, if you're using the Live Edition like me, what you could do is click Try Alma Linux. And what this will do is give us an opportunity to test Alma Linux before we install it. Anyway, to test the live image, what we'll do is click Try Alma Linux. We'll click Close. And here we have the desktop. At this point, we are actually using Alma Linux. I can go to Activities. I can check out the default applications that are installed here. For example, there's a terminal. There's also LibreOffice. And here it is. 
As you can see, it's a full operating environment. Now one thing I recommend that you check for sure is whether or not you have networking support. If you have an ethernet cable plugged in, you might already have a connection to the internet. On my end, I don't, but I do have Wi-Fi. So what I'll do is click right here. I'll click select network. We just want to make sure that this works. I'll choose my network and I'll click connect. I'll type in the password. And let's test it. And so far, so good. Check it out. The Wi-Fi icon is lit up. So I can go to activities. I can launch Firefox. And it looks like it's working. Now, once you're satisfied and you want to go ahead and install it, what you'll do is click activities. And then down here, we have the installer. At this point, the installation process should be the same regardless of the ISO image that you're using. On the very first screen here, what we're doing is choosing the language for the installation process. So what you'll do is choose your primary language from the list right here. And you can also test your keyboard layout in the box down below. Now on my end, I'll leave it on English and I'll click continue. Now here we have the main screen of the installer. Basically what we have to do is go through each of these sections. We might skip one or two of them, but we're going to go through most of these sections here and we'll answer any questions within each section to customize the installation. And then once we're done, we'll begin the installation. Anyway, here we can select the keyboard layout. This is similar to the previous screen, but this one is specific to the keyboard. If you use a different keyboard, what you could do is click the plus icon right here and you could choose it from the list. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, mine is already correct. I just wanted you to be aware of the fact that you can change it. And you have another test box right here if you want to make sure that your keyboard is working properly. And once you're done, we'll click Done. Next, what we'll do is move on to Installation Destination. So let's click on that. And then what we're going to do is click on the hard drive that we want to install Alma Linux onto. Again, what we'll do is erase the entire hard drive. Just wanted to make sure that you've backed up everything and also make sure that you choose the correct hard drive. We definitely don't want to choose the USB drive that we booted from. We want to choose the target disk. And in my case, it's this one right here. Now we don't have to make any changes here, even if you only have one selection. We'll click done. And in my case, it's going to realize that there's not enough space on the drive. There's already an operating system on that hard drive. So what we're going to do is click reclaim space. We'll click delete all. Reclaim space again. And we're all set for this section. What we'll do now is move on to root password. And we're going to type a password for the root account. And again, now optionally, you could have just checked this box right here to lock the root account. If you have no intention of using it at all, it's up to you. But if you type a password here, it's going to unlock the account. Anyway, we're done here. And we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Technically time and date would be next. Instead, 
what we want to do is go down here to network and host name. So we'll click on that. In my case, I'm already connected to a network and that's because I connected in live mode and demo mode. If you're booting from the server installer, what you'll have to do is enable networking right here. You can choose the host name here if you'd like to. In my case, this is my footage PC. So I will apply that and click done. Just want to make sure that you have a network connection. And once you're sure of that, what we'll do is go here to time and date. And we'll click on the map close to our geographic location. I'm somewhere around in here, close to Detroit. So that should be good enough. Also, I recommend that network time is checked. That's going to enable automatic time synchronization. And that's also why I wanted you to go to the networking section first, because if you don't have a network connection, then you won't be able to enable this. Anyway, I'll click done. And what we'll do is move on to KDump. Now on your end, you can leave this enabled. I don't see any reason to disable this unless your machine is constrained for hard drive space or something like that. And if you fit that description, then you can disable this to save a bit of hard drive space. I'll leave that up to you, but we'll click done. Let's go ahead and create a user. So I'll type in my information right here. And this is for your primary user account. And I like to simplify my username here. I recommend that we make the user an administrator. We'll leave this box checked here. I'll type in a super secret password. And we should be good to go. We'll click done. And that should be everything. So if you want to begin the installation and you're sure you want to replace your current operating system, you'll click right here to begin the installation. And I'll be right back as soon as it's finished. All right, it looks like installation is complete. So what we'll do is click finish installation. And then I'll click up here. And then down to power off. And finally restart in the case of live media and then restart to restart the system. Let's see how it went. All right. Looks like installation is complete and pardon the resolution, but I have a 4k screen, but anyway, I'll log in. And check it out, we have a successful installation of Alma Linux OS. And there you go. I hope you enjoy your brand new installation of Alma Linux OS. It's a fantastic distribution and you're going to love it. I also hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, then be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know how much you love this video. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next video.